Hi there folks, OCA here. You might have heard about the recent active room treatment additions to the automated room correction systems by the industrial leaders Trino and Dirac. Trino calls their new addition waveforming and Dirac calls it simply art for active room treatment. In this tutorial we will quickly go through the properties of these new systems, compare them with each other and then I'll show you a new digital base array filter based on the same concept which we will create in Room EQ Wizard. To briefly explain what active room treatment is and why there is a need for it, let's look at what happens after a bass wave leaves the speaker in a room. Here's a sound wave. The wavelength is calculated by dividing the speed of sound with the frequency of the signal. A 20 Hz bass wave has over 17 meters of wavelength. Room modes occur whenever the room length is a multiple of the wavelength of a frequency. If this is the case, the cancellations and amplifications of certain frequencies invariably occur at the same spots in the room. Especially small, square rooms with parallel walls are prone to room modes. When the reflected wave interferes with the original wave, cancellations or overemphasis of individual frequency bands occur at various fixed positions. This means that you do not hear certain frequencies at all or hear them at up to twice the volume. As we see during the interaction, there is either a dip or a peak caused. In this frequency response graph, you can easily see these peaks and dips caused by room modes. The yellow line is the actual response of the speaker, meaning it's the response if this measurement was done out in the open or in an, an echoic chamber with no reflections. The red line is the actual response in a room. The loudness of bass frequencies deviates up to 15 dB from normal each way, either dips or the peaks. The positive contributions are the cause for boomy bass and the negative contributions are the cause for lack of bass definition. And it's not only the volume of particular frequency that suffers from these room modes. Since the sound waves are reflected back and forth between parallel walls, the affected frequencies stay longer in the room. We can see the decay times of certain frequencies in this waterfall graph. 93.5 Hz is not only produced louder than it should be, but it's also present in the room almost half a second later after it's produced by the speaker. 34 Hz is also similarly ringing for longer than the rest of the frequencies. This spectrogram graph also illustrates the longer decay times of base frequencies. You can see most frequencies completely disappear after about 200 milliseconds, whereas the base frequencies can continue to ring in the room for up to a second later in the case of around 50 Hz here, which will interfere with the next frequency plate and cause muddy sound. Traditional solutions will require very large volumes of dense material to absorb these low frequency standing waves, which is impractical if at all possible. Other approaches such as bass traps are typically effective only at certain frequencies and are impractical as a broadband solution. In response to this reality, multiple subwoofer arrangements have been adopted in addition to passive treatment. Some of these approaches can indeed mitigate the effect of the room modes but do not address the root cause which is wave interference. The exception is double bass array method. As the name suggests, it uses two arrays of subwoofers, one on the front wall the emitting array and the other on the rear wall, the absorbing array. The emitting array produces a planar wave and the absorbing array attempts to cancel the rear wall reflection with an inverted version of the same signal delayed by the amount of time it takes the sound to travel room light. Both Trino waveforming and drug art are improved and more sophisticated versions of a double bass array in their essence. Trino system requires carefully placed multiple subwoofer arrays on front and rear walls Front wall configuration emits and absorbs base frequencies while rear wall subwoofers are only there to absorb. Thus, the rear wall subwoofers could be less powerful, however, they need to have the same bandwidth with the front subwoofers. They sample the so-called acoustic field in the room by measuring the room at 96 different positions with a 3D microphone. Then the waveforming processor calculates the filters to apply to each subwoofer of the system and applies these filters to eliminate the model signature of the room throughout the listening area. Dirac Art is also a so-called MIMO, multi-input, multi-output system, but it uses existing speakers in the room. It's more practical and easier to set up in that expect, but the removal of room modes and shortening of decay times are less effective. Multiple subwoofers or at least full range surround speakers all around will be required to have the optimal effects. To finalize the comparison, I also asked various large language model artificial intelligence opinions about Trino waveforming versus, versus Dirac Art. ChatGPT 3.5 is unaware of these technologies due to his web knowledge being kept on September 2021. I think GPT 4, which is a paid version, is up to date. 
it simply explained classical Torino and Dirac room correction systems, so it was useless. Cloud similarly just compared the old room correction systems, pretending it's giving some information. Again, useless. My new favorite, Google Bart, on the other hand, correctly identified waveforming and art additions to these room correction systems. Trino waveforming uses a large subwoofer array, typically it's consisting of four or more subwoofers placed in different locations around the room. Dirac Art, on the other hand, can use any speaker in the system, including the main speakers and surround speakers. Trino waveforming uses a proprietary algorithm that is specifically designed to work with subwoofer arrays. Dirac Art uses a more general purpose algorithm that can be used with any type of speaker system. Trino waveforming is more complex to set up and implement than Dirac Art, which is correct. It requires careful placement of the subwoofers and precise calibration of the system. Dirac Art is more straightforward to set up and can be done by the user at home. Also correct. In terms of performance, both Trino waveforming and Dirac Art can deliver excellent results. However, Trino waveforming is generally considered to be the more advanced technology and it can provide better bass performance in rooms with difficult acoustics also correct and which technology is right for you if you have dedicated home theater with a large subwoofer array then trino waveforming is the best option it will provide you with the best possible bass performance if you have a more modest system or if you are not comfortable with the complexity of setting up and calibrating trino waveforming then dirac art is a great alternative it's easier to use and can still deliver excellent results all of these are correct and there are other drafts that it produces draft 2 anything different here Overall, Trino waveforming is the better technology for achieving the absolute base response possible. However, it's more expensive and more difficult to implement than Dirac Art. Completely correct. And Draft 3 is also similar. Dirac Art is only available with Storm Audio at the moment. It will come to Sound United Gear, Marans and Denon sometime in 2024. And Trino has its proprietary amplifiers and what have you. Obviously, it's more expensive than even Dirac Art. Now let's see what we can do to deal with the room modes for free with a manually created digital filter in the Room EQ Wizard. Let's start with opening REW. Here I have left and right speakers separately measured in two different microphone positions, 1 and 2, same for R1 and R2. And how I took these measurements, measure them long, at least one million I would suggest, and as loud as you will listen to, measure each speaker multiple times, eliminating distorted ones out and at multiple microphone locations. Make sure you use timing reference, either acoustic and or loopback, and make sure you use clock adjustments. Use the measurement microphone in horizontal position and upload the correct calibration file for zero degrees, ideally minimum phase version of it. Cross-correlate each speaker's measurement to central listening position and take vector average. So now let's say we have two different measurements for left speaker at two different locations. Okay, copy selections to other overlay graphs. Let's go to impulse. My computer is very slow today for some reason. I'm sorry for that, but it will require a Windows reinstallation, I guess, so I can't be bothered with it at this stage. Now, right speaker was the acoustic timing reference. And there is a distance between the left and right speaker, about 8 millimeters, as you can see here from mouse right click. But even left 1 and left 2 have differences between each other. You can take as many microphone positions as you like. I would suggest to keep them closer to central listening position. But first we have to cross-correlate everything to the central for each speaker. So cross-correlate L2 with L1. Make sure you select L1 and make sure L1 is on top of L2 and cross-correlation align and now you can watch here that they will align on each other. L2 has moved to be in alignment with L1. Let's do the same for toggle selections and R1 and R2, copy selections to other overlay graphs. Because right speaker was the acoustic timing reference speaker, they are already aligned. So just take a vector average of these two. This is R0 and 
we forgot to take vector average of L1 and L2 after they were aligned and vector average this is L0 now let's see how is L0 and R0 doing as you see they are about 6.2 milliseconds away from time zero this is my system delay the digital audio converter and the amplifier so first remove IR delays from these two when they are selected here you just click remove IR delays and they probably move back to zero now and here they are and the difference between them this is zero let's keep removing the hard list sometimes during the first trial yeah now it's perfectly aligned no not now again now the right speaker as the acoustic timing refers is exactly on time zero and left is a bit deviated so we click on R0 and cross correlation align. You will see left moving on top of R now slowly thanks to my computer today but it will get there eventually I believe. Yeah that's it it's cross correlation aligned it's a very accurate alignment method now that they are aligned and there is no time delay we can vector average them to see our combined stereo response which i will call lr0 as you see it's also an on top of them let's see their phase responses for example Now, how do we create a virtual base array filter in the most efficient way? With LR0, apply a 1-1 one, one smoothing, okay? We don't need to do that for R0 and L0. Use 10 to 200 hertz and linear frequency axis logarithmic axis these are not equal when you click this one it switches from logarithmic to linear and it's easier to see the multiples of frequencies in this mode this new VBA technique measures the determines the filter from the highest peak of the 1-1 one, one smoothed response of the vector average of two speakers okay and to see the exact frequency you have to zoom in Even more as much as you can dare it doesn't do the left click anymore and this is the limit so now you just decide where is the exact point it's touch I'm now using the keyboard this is where it's touching and something like this 88.851 Hertz and this is the new VBA Excel and here you enter 88.851 and everything else impulse peak time for that frequency and uh, room modes automatically calculated okay my resonant frequency is 44.426 Hertz and it's multiples that are dips and peaks so dip peak dip peak dip peak okay this also calculates the impulse peak time and everything else you need no longer need for logarithmic axis go to EQ at any one of these responses and just generate from filter tasks uh, generate measurement from filters when there is no filter at all as you see it's empty when there is no filter what it will generate is the perfect Dirac impulse which we call Dirac it's something like this zero phase zero volume okay and impulse is something like that just one peak at time zero and completely flat afterwards here it's showing step response and whatnot but this is this is direct impulse for you this is the first step of creating the base array filter now the second step go to lr0 again and this time create 
an EQ filter here the last two crossover filters low pass and high pass Butterworth both of them and 12 dB per octave frequency is half of what you found here 88.851 so 44.4255 okay you have this data here anyway one low pass filter uh, 12 dB per octave Butterworth 444255 same high pass there is no filter smoothing there is no filter SPL offset now let's enter this value here 44.4255 and same goes to high pass 455 didn't work okay and again generate measurement from filters but this time we really generated a filter as you see at 44 hertz at 12 dB per octave roll off a high pass filter and the low pass filter again with the same 12 dB per octave roll so the peak of the filter is at half the frequency that we found in this one over one smoothed peak of the stereo response the top of it is at minus 6 dB as you see okay and Dirac is at 0 dB now we have to give it a timing offset so that it just kicks in when the standing wave is bounced from the front wall and comes back and Excel again calculates this there will be a link for this file in the descriptions under the video but it's very easy to calculate anyway the impulse peak time is 22.51 milliseconds for this frequencies standing wave okay but also what REW created this filter if you go to IR windows you will see that there is a delay of 1.88 milliseconds that comes from the filters themselves so here you enter 1.88 and this is the total time offset you have to apply to this filter minus 20.6296 so with the filter lr0 actually let's call this low pass high pass filter or something okay go to impulse tap offset t equals zero and enter the value here minus 20.6296 minus 20.6296 apply you can always see the cumulative shift here that you applied we just applied the 6.189 meter delay to this filter now trace arithmetic Dirac plus this filter we have to check here that the peak of the filter is exactly at our frequency 44.4255 I mean despite all these calculations here there is always a deviation from uh, reality I think due to FFT so you need to manually adjust it to it will work even like that but to be more precise you have to manually adjust that this direct impulse peak is exactly at 44.4255 so let's make it 44.4255 we want it somewhere around here so it has to move to the left go to the filter again impulse offset t equals zero it already has minus 20.6296 you add to it another minus two milliseconds let's see where, where it goes now again you have to do each time Dirac plus LPHPF and it's almost there a bit on overshoot so let's make it even larger and even higher so you can see the peak What was the frequency that we were after? 444255. 44425. Something like that. So minus two was too much. It has to now go backwards. So plus something less than two for this filter again. 
plus 0 0.25 let's say apply all SPL Dirac plus that and now it's too much so it should have been minus 0 0.125 you go here impulse minus 0 0.125 apply Dirac plus LP HPF and voila here you go it is exactly on where we want it to be doesn't need to be so accurate delete all the other false ones so now LP HPF with minus 22.5046 milliseconds is the exact delay that we need for some reason it doesn't perfectly match with what you find here but it's very close and you can make it more accurate just by trial and error and you don't really need to now we can go back to normal scale with fit to data now this is our VBA filter let's call this VBA minimum phase version of this filter measurement actions minimum phase version is the VBA filter okay now what else can we do to improve that even further because when you for example LR0 here let's remove the smoothing and everything from it and our filter here when you convolve them together like if we apply this filter to this response what we will get is slightly better in the dip slightly better here and here and some reduction in the peaks as well but not adequate remember that we didn't apply any SPL offset or what have you to the filter it's as pure as it comes equal low pass filter and high pass filter at the exact frequency and nothing else and this is the effect now a new addition to VBA LR0 go to EQ this EQ filter still has these by the way so remove them just causes confusion Now you need a target curve, okay, Dr. Olive, calculate target. Ideally, find the real curve of your speakers. For me, it is this one here, target counter two. Okay, this is my speaker's actual anechoic response. This is important to find out. I created this curve myself, but you can use just a Harman curve or some other curve but the slope here the roll off is important okay i know my speakers can produce this and this is what is caused in the room there is all this dip here another dip and these peaks these are standing waves okay now up to where go to eq filters and apply a low shelf filter the frequency is exactly double of your peak frequency which was 88851 so 88.851 times 2 177.702 so this is 177.702 okay and give it a 6 dB boost what is happening is you're lifting up the dip until the curve of the speaker here as you see this is the expected target curve I mean expected response of the speaker this is what it was in this room and somehow magically when you rotate it it exactly twice the room mode this dip here rises all the way to where it's supposed to be okay and also here you will see that it is right on the actual expected axis and it's 6 dB and probably it will be 6 dB for your particular speaker as well okay now generate measurement from filters so let's have a copy of this filter and this is our low shelf filter of 6 dB generated at double the frequency of the peak now the final operation this is already a minimum phase filter created by REW so we multiply VBA minimum phase and this low shelf filter if you want you can name this low shelf 6db 
or you can even write but it's already written here in the notes so not necessary so the low shelf filter and the VBA filter are multiplied and this is our FVBA the magical base array filter look at the shape of that filter it has inside it a low shelf and the room mode killing base array filter together and now let's see what happens when you use this as your filter when you apply it to the stereo response and let's not forget that this was our target curve generate measurement from target shape as you can see now the dips are gone and everything is above the target but obviously you will not apply this to LR0 it's always to a single speaker but just to show you and this is not the target anyways target is calculated with other ways so we created the digital base array filter at this stage you have to apply this to L0 and R0 separately let's remove their smoothing so L0 times FVBA and R0 times FVBA this one is R1 this one is L1 now L1 and R1 unsmoothed versions get a dB plus phase average this yields the best target curve calculation this is the dB plus phase average still unsmoothed go to EQ and with your perfect target curve for your speakers if you have one calculate target level from response 60.9 db and look at that it's right there with the actual speaker response and generate measurement from target shape so now this is the target curve that you need to use for equalizing applying filters to your speaker read the data offset here 60.90 db so everything should be equalized to target 60.90 now remove everything clear selections L1 and R1 apply 1 over 48 smoothing like so and then go to the 1 over 48 smoothed version of L1 and enter your target level which was 60.90 no more calculate target level from response you already have that for the left and right speaker together and from 20 to 177.71 double your peak and you can allow 5 db boost overall and individual and flatness target one allow narrow filters below 200 hertz is fine do not tick this one although it's not relevant with this measurement with this equalization and match response to target hit ok and continue anyway as you see this is the response we're gonna be ending up with so generate measurement from filters and predict it also which is the result if you really want do the same with R1 remember the 1 over 48 smoothing here and 60 point 90 match response to target generate measurement from filters and predicted now let's vector average the predicted after eq filters result of left and right vector average okay so lr0 like that with this target curve ended up like that which we call LR2 yes look all this dip here is almost lost and these are improved all the peaks are gone and look at this part here we have 5.5 dB gain here also again more than 8 db gain here in this dip the other dips that still resist is because of the phase differences between my left and right speaker which we'll be dealing with quite soon but this is the vba part of the filter if you really want to continue what else we can do with the base response okay we did get rid of the dips and peaks and waterfall graphs also must have 
improved massively let's see it from 10 to 200 this is the result and this is how it was now from this to this as you see okay no trino waveforming or dirac art and the same speaker if uh, i could manipulate other speakers with my digital filter i'm sure a lot better results could be achieved but unfortunately they don't open these receivers multiple filters to users face correction is next this is our lr2 response let's do the face correction over this one remove ir delay here so let's do it here go to face clear selections this is where we are now okay remove ir delays which will be you will see as a move here the idea is to bring the tip of the phase response to zero axis remove ir delays my machine slowly trying to take care of it but here as you see it's at zero now the tip 24,000 is the highest frequency measured and it arrives first so that should be zero degrees this is the idea once you remove ir delays now it's time to generate excess phase version for phase corrections measurement actions excess phase version and include calibration file effects because this is a mid calibration file generated measurement derivation let me say and make excess phase copy excess phase copy as you see has no spl variation it's zero db everywhere but it has the excess phase of the speakers now export this to reface range of measurement resolution of measurement use smoothing of measurement use raw export format do not include any comments now call this lr2 excess phase remember to correct phase always work with excess phase never the phase itself because it's only the excess phase you can correct because you're trying to generate a minimum phase copy of the speaker response in the room which is not minimum phase when you remove the excess phase or correct it you can at least at the listening position create a minimum phase speaker response now open reface my reface is also buggy these days uh, but it will do the job now measurement import from file lr2 excess phase here comes our excess phase now you know your crossover frequencies you should mine is two crossovers the high one between the twitter and the mid-range woofer is 2700 hertz and it's a fourth order crossover so 6 db times 4 24 db per octave and then the second crossover between the woofer and the mid-range driver is at 260 hertz which is another two orders of crossover filters and as you see the response is anywhere but at phase zero degree this is because it's inverted polarity inverted when you see it in minus pi minus 180 degrees phase and plus 180 degrees phase it usually means it's inverted by the way let me remove height magnitude because it's meaningless so go to general and polarity invert this polarity inversion will not work it only inverts it on the screen this really inverts in the response that we will generate at here so when you invert it as you see it is on top of zero axis as close as it can be ignore the high frequencies okay this is timing related and it's not almost impossible to measure accurately but here it looks like it has some decent flat response close to zero degree now what else we can do it is here quite okay but here in the base response it's nothing but okay so there is a box correction we have to, we can do at 41 hertz which is my port frequency and my speaker has front and rear box ports so vented low cue was my previous choice in the past but there are better ways to do it with all pass filters select 41 select all pass and invert it in time with compensate okay now it's more closer to zero axis but there is a discontinuity here at 
39.3 hertz i think something like that let's call it 41 again and this time second order all pass again time inverted and play with the queue with keyboard up and down keys until it becomes flat but q4 and q5 you can left click your mouse draw a rectangle and zoom in to the area when you play with the keyboard any if you change anything you will see a temporary yellow line which will show the frequency so four as you see it is not exactly flat it is tilted a little bit and five is tilted to the other way so it should be something like 4.5 six seven seven is too much six seems flat okay now the frequency to be accurate with the frequency this is zero axis okay 41 is below zero axis so it should be less than 41 40 is still below zero axis so 39 now it's above zero axis see this is zero you are above here at 41 39 so 39.5 again below 4 4 is above so 39.45 44 43 let's zoom it even more and just to see 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 3, 4, 2, 5, 4, 2, 6, 4, 2, 7, yeah. And also try some more accuracy here. 5, 6, 7, 4, 5, 4, 3, 3.9. Okay, so look, the, the longer this flat line is the better it is so 3.5 seems to be the best now with a right click of the mouse you can get back the previous zoom level and another right click and the full screen now as you see we got rid of the discontinuity here at 41 hertz so and the base response is much flatter although it's not exactly at zero so let's also apply a subsonic filter but you have a lot of choices here you know you don't know which one to apply and what not so again let's use all pass filters for it first order subsonic filters are typically below 20 hertz so let's start from 20 let's go down remember this speaker is capable of producing only 32 33 hertz bass at most now where i will stop is look at the difference here and here here it's one two three almost four squares and here one two three here almost four it's kind of almost equal maybe 13 is too much 14 is too much 13 is too little 13.678 Okay, so this part now is equal to this part so with a subsonic filter and you can see that we have now a pretty flat phase response all the way through I mean excess phase is no more than uh, 35 degrees anywhere be from 20 Hertz all the way to 5k Hertz so this is our crossover and port phase correction and it's impossible to do this kind of accuracy with an automated calibration system no matter what it is waveforming or art so this is another advantage now export this with 48 kilohertz sampling rate 64 bits ieee mono 131072 samples so that the window size is equal to the rew measurement window size although it's not important rectangular although with this many tabs you really don't need any optimization but rectangular means no windowing and it is pretty at least so this is XO correction and select the directory it was on desktop and alphabetical order it was waveforming and generate voila now it's time to import this t 
to REW, like that. It will come with some SPL offset, random SPL offset, which you can see in the info window. It's around 81, 82. As you see, it's here, and it's 81.62, let's say. So actions, sorry, measurement actions, minus 81.62. And now it's down here at zero. And because the IR windows is 100 to 500, you see some disturbances here. When you make it 125, 500 is a little better. And the measurements are all 125, 500. FVBA is, has its own window size, which you have to obey because of the calculations. This is what we have decided. Now, your filters are the fixed filter for both um, it's also good practice to check that the impulse peaks are close to each other of all the filters I click the right click and waiting okay this is our crossover filter this is our VBA filter and these are our EQ filters rev auto EQ fit to data all of them and as you see their peaks seem to be all at time zero except for the XO filter well the timing was correct in reface so I don't think we should move that doesn't really matter now FVBA which is the same for both speakers and XO which is the same for both speakers you can calculate them, multiply them already and create one filter which is common between both CF for common filter and then with CF filter L1 times CF this is filter left FL complete filter and filter R1 times CF and this is FR complete right speaker filter let's see them on screen so these are the filters and these are their phase responses copy selections to overlay graphs and look it's a crossover filter but there is a phase filter here due to the minimum phase auto eq filters and some minor adjustments and what these filters will generate is trace arithmetic L0 times FL and R0 times FR this is left final LF and this is right final RF here on screen LF and RF and let's calculate LRF their stereo combined response vector average so LRF LR2 and LR0 do we have an LR1? no, it's not necessary this is just after the VBA before the equalization so apply to all of them psychoacoustic smoothing for ease of read Did we not apply to XO no. offset? Yeah, I forgot to do this and offset to data, but it's fine. Nothing other than SPL value will change. I mean, look the, at the moment, because XO SPL offset wasn't properly uh, removed, LR0 and LR1 are here around 65 dB but LRF jumped another 85 dB but phase response, uh, step response, impulse response uh, clarity, everything will be the same so copy to other overlay graphs or if you want we can give this a minus 81.6 was it? offset so this is our LRF now as you see the dips here are eliminated peaks are gone 
and very similar to the speaker's original response which you see here and this is our final and we didn't touch anything beyond 177 hertz now overlays looking at the results look at our final responses face and actually make it 20 to 20 infra sonic frequencies are not of interest okay this is the phase response it's not exactly at zero in this base uh, frequencies but its excess phase is at zero this is the minimum phase version of these speakers you can't get it better than that now impulse when you fit to data and plot normalized and don't do that don't normalize let's see what is the differences in the impulse responses lr0 lr2 and look at lrf no bounce back here less than all of them and it goes higher than all of them and diminish faster than all of them now etc graph also is normalized though but same step graph look at that due to the port convention there is some peer ringing but this is completely inaudible but the step response with unnormalized is so much better when you normalize everything between pulse peaks and whatnot this is the final step response look it's not going down like the others but it's going higher up and then no more vibrations here no fluctuations and almost flat from 32 milliseconds onwards group play you will see the difference of this vba filter here the best look at that all these group plays in the base response even after eq are almost completely gone it's at time zero And clarity hopefully will not at least get worse C80 for music and look at LRF it was here jump to here after VBA and filters and after phase correction it's still on the same level it get even better here as you see and we didn't touch outside this area so this is only a calculation problem so this is the technique finally before you export these filters for use obviously in the information window you will see that they had 262,144 samples which is a bit too much it will be too slow for many applications so go to measurement actions and trim ir2 windows once you do that it goes down to 32,768 samples you don't need to check anything the stream function makes the trimming perfectly there is no difference in the phase and magnitude response of the filter do the same for the front right and then export them as wave file export impulse response as wave when fl trimmed is selected stereo 32 bits float left channel fl trimmed light channel fr trimmed 48 kilohertz apply ir windows before export this is important for clipping and also speed of the filters and this stereo filter you can also export them as mono for some different convolution engines but this is good for rune and eq apo as far as i know and there will be some clipping involved with the most clip happy of tracks but most of this is due to rune and face filters and what have you if it's uh, above 10 then you, your filters have some problems but i have seen regularly 8 9 6 with normal sound all you will need is usually 3 db or 6 db and okay and give it a name vba low shelf let's say and just save it and this wave file is a convolution filter you can just direct your convolution engine to this wave file and this filter will be applied and 
hear the results for yourself. You can thank me later. This is all for today, folks. Don't forget to subscribe. A lot of interesting videos are in the pipeline. Goodbye.